again, I promised at the very beginning that we we're going to go back and look at that wonderful little term phi, that phase constant, that phase shift that I've been talking about, that we've just kind of been carrying along. It hasn't really done anything. In fact, it's actually been zero in every one of our cases. But let's actually take a look at what it means. So, so look at that problem again, and we're going to see, this is the previous problem we solved with the 1.1 newton meter spring constant that oscillates at one second. We know that it has a mass of four kilograms now. So again, wonderful little diagram showing us this thing's oscillating. But if we were to plot this curve as a function of time, this is something I told you guys you should probably do on your own, we'll start up at its maximum, when it starts at its maximum value, goes all the way to the left, then to the right. So it starts at the right, goes to the left, and goes back to the right. And that's great and stuff. Now, what happens if I were to set time equals zero at a different point? Let's say instead of choosing this very end point here, let's say I choose some point over a little bit before it gets to the end. What happens? Well, if we don't start exactly at the end point, but somewhere in between, what happens is this curve is just going to shift. So in this case, the curve now starts off with an initial position at zero. Well, we know that it's oscillating between a maximum amplitude and a minimum amplitude. Zero is halfway in between. So this is looking at the point where instead of being at the min or the max, we're in the middle. So it's when it's in the middle moving towards the right. My positive direction is towards the right. So we're just starting in here. And what we're doing is we're actually changing the phase of this. So the phase is just the name we give to how far from where this thing is zero to where we're actually start. We can give it an initial offset. And this is nice when we start off with you know a spring and we give it a nice kick at the beginning. Maybe it doesn't start off as a cosine, maybe it starts off with some stretch position and has some initial velocity. So we can use these things to help us figure out how to solve uh, problems. And it just gives us a little bit more of a general equation than what uh, what we get if we had to always start with the cosine at its maximum amplitude. We're just shifting it a little bit. The other reason why, uh, it's also another reason why we haven't seen any sine functions, even though sine functions obey the same property. Uh, the sine function and the cosine function are related, if you remember from mathematics, based off of a pi over 2 phase shift. So we could put that pi over 2 phase shift like we did here. We turn the cosine into a sine function. Just kind of some things to remember, and this is stuff that Hopefully you learned in your trade class, and if not, you may want to go back and brush up. But just to give you an example of what's happening, we have our three equations, and as phi changes, we can watch these things. So as phi increases in here, we have a minus phi, so as phi increases, we'll see that this graph shifts. So the larger this phi, the more that this thing shifts. You have to have a minus sign, and if you don't believe me that this minus sign is the right one, or why, you're, why it does it, it's because if you do a positive value here, we can measure phi in this direction. So phi is the number of um, cycles, number of um, radians that we have to shift this over. So sometimes phi is given in terms of starting a couple seconds late and we have to relate seconds back into things but most of the time it might just give you a phase shift but phase shift this phi deals with starting with a cosine and how much do we shift it to the right larger phi larger shift to the right so now that we've covered phase shift we've actually covered everything in this general formula for uh, oscillation as a function of time and later on, when we actually look at standing waves, we're going to build on this and some other types of waves. We may build on this type of uh, uh, this type of mathematics, but for right now, we actually are at the end of what everything's happening. So, in the next video, we're going to look at another example and see just another another example of oscillations.